tropic moment is the type of tropic events okay then what is tropic moment first of all let me explain you again that stimulus have particular direction stimulus have particular direction when is stimulus when is stimulus have particular direction and the plant responds in that direction or opposite to that direction okay plant starts showing movement towards the direction there should be special movement either bending of roots or stems or anything towards the that particular direction that type of movement is called nest is called tropic movement okay like you have seen like you have seen that if you if the plant is kept if the plant is kept in a unilateral direction okay so for some time if sunlight is coming then what is going to happen here is the plant's root Plants, plant stem is going to bend in that direction. It is going to bend in this particular direction. Okay. So it is unilateral light. Unilateral light means a particular direction of light. Okay. Unilateral light is given here. Okay. You understood? Nidwan, Jaslyn, another student, please turn on your camera. Okay, so when light is given, then it is start bending. And what is the reason why why it start bending? For someone, let me discuss. In the previous class, we have uh, studied about the oxygen hormone. And oxygen is is a growth promoting hormone. Growth promoting hormone that help in cell division. That help in cell division. Okay, that have been cell division. So, actually, what is going to happen when a unilateral light is given to the plant means plant is going to have unilateral light. So, in that condition, you know that there will be when it is a unilateral light, sunlight. So, this is let's suppose this is a stem. So, you will feel that this region of a stem is in in the contact with the sun or in the direct with the sunlight. So, this is the light region. And this is the shady region. This will be the shady region. Shady region. Are you getting my point? Clearly, are you getting my point? So one is shady region, another one is is the light region. So the oxygen secretion is more. Oxygen secretion is more in which in this region that is shady region. In the shady region, the more oxygen will be secreted. Okay, so what would happen, Jobita, if there is a secretion of uh, at the shady region, is more more oxygen will be secreted in the shady region than the the region that is in the contact or in the direct with the sunlight. Okay, sunlight is falling over it. So if this more oxygen is secreted, the most more cell division will take place in this region. Jaslyn, you understood? More cell division will take place in this region. And if more cell division is taking place, then what is going to happen? The this this region will start will start growing at faster rate, and this region, the front front region, will be growing at slower rate. Okay, you will notice that this front this will 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 start growing at faster rate. Okay. At faster rate, and this will result in slowing. But you know that this cannot be like one is short, one is half. So, what is going to happen? Just imagine a situation that these two points should be over one another. Over one another means they should be in front of one another. The point, this point will be in front of this one, and this point will be in front of this one. But one is larger in in uh, you can say this will be having more length, and this will be going to have shorter length. How it is possible? This is only possible. When the shape is like this, okay. This is shorter length, but both are in front of it, parallel to each other. And this is okay. Got it. This is shorter length. This is bigger length. 
So what I am going to do here is that whenever a unilateral light is given to the plant, the more oxygen will be secreted in the shady region. In the shady region, this result in 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 going the the back region or the shady region at faster rate, and the front region at the slower rate. And because of this, this is going to have the plant curves. Okay. Now you understood, Jobita. Unmute your mic. Yes, sir. You understood clearly. Madhiha, Amar, Ridwan. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Deva. Sir. Okay. So here the question, here the answer for the question, that what would happen? So photo, photo, phototropic movement means when unilateral direction of light is is given to the plant. Write down the first tropic movement. Have you noted the definition of tropic movement in the previous class? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now. The type of tropic movement is phototropic movement. So note down the definition. Phototropic movement. When the when a unilateral direction or light is given to the plant, the shoot of the plant bend towards the light. Note down when unilateral light is given. Yes, in, I, have, I have a question here. Yes. Uh, this one. Uh, does does the does uh, does the shoot of the plant go towards the light or away from the light, or like both of them? It will go towards the light. I will okay. go towards the light, okay? And this bending phenomena is known as phototropism. Note it down. Done, sir. Done? Yes. Okay. Next. Everybody? Zeba, Madiha, Hashid? Yes, done? Yes. Done. Okay. Now the question comes on this topic that why does plant should bend towards when the light is unilateral direction light, uh, light is given to the plant so i just explained you previously that in when 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 we are having a unilateral light so the region that is away from the sun or that is in the shady region because this is lighted region so this will be the shady region the, in the shady region more oxygen is being secreted as a result of which this region grow at faster rate wait a minute why don't the charger This region grow at faster rate. Backward region will grow at faster rate. And when this region grows at faster rate, so this curve like this way. This is in growth. This is more length and this is a smaller length. Okay. So oxygen, which is a growth promoting hormone, secrete more in the shady region than the area which is in the light. So when unilater unilateral light is given, unidirectional light is given, the area of plant which is behind which is behind or which is shady region okay will grow note it down till here
Dan? Terima kasih. It's an important question from the NCRT. Okay. So plants. Okay. So it is written that the area, the area of plant which is behind, just in still writing and Nidwan, are you there in the class? Yes, sir. Okay. Done. Done? Okay. Done, sir. Done, sir. So here it is. That the ozim and the layer. So or or the, the next part of this part question. Uh, or in the shade, which is which is this is the question continue from here the area of plant which is behind or in the shady region or in the shady region grows at faster rate and it grows at faster rate the area which is in shady region will grow at faster rate this uneven growth than the region that is in light than this region it grow at faster rate this uneven growth result result is uh, means this uneven growth of a stem resulting in the bending of Light, okay towards light so it bends okay got it so completed on the shade that grows at fast rate and then and then the region which is in light Done, sir. Done? Jaslyn, you done? No, sir. Noted. Done. Done. Okay. Done, Jovita. Okay. The next type of movement is called geotropism. Geotropism means the movement or the growth of plant parts towards the or against the gravity is called geotropism. You have seen that uh, that when we have a plant, okay, and that is in the that is growing. So you know that the plants stem moves against the gravity. Stems show negative geotropism, geotropism, and the roots moves towards the gravity. So this is show positive geotropism. Geotropism. Even if you if you put this this spot like this okay so you will notice that this shoot will start growing like this and this and the root will start growing like this so it's still it is showing the geotropism okay so got it if it is like this or it is like this the both means if you bend the plant then again the stem will move against the gravity it will not continuously move like this okay it will after some time some days it will start growing, growing like this and the roots will grow like this okay so they are against the gravity and so one is uh, the roots will grow to grow towards the gravity but, but uh, what the the shoot will grow uh, what 
against the gravity it will move against the gravity that is a rule because the because the oxygen oxygen or the apical meristematic tissue just at the tip so it will move just against the gravity and there are some other causes also okay so what wine why the wine yeah like the wine said uh, uh, like actually this is because of the activity of the meristematic tissue okay so the meristematic tissue are just like they are present at the tips they are not continuously growing like this okay okay they are just growing like this so this result in bending okay moreover there that's this is just against the gravity this is the tropic movement of plant okay so note it down uh, geotropism the movement of or growth of plant part towards or against the gravity is called geotropism and that is positive geotropism is shown by is shown by roots and the negative geotropism is shown by gravity it is shown by stem make both the diagrams of this one and this one Uh, done, sir. Done? Okay, yes, sir. Okay, let's move further. The next type of tropic movement is, is chemotropism. Chemotropism means there is a chemical secretions. Okay, plant is responding to some chemicals, okay? So, let's suppose this is a plant part you you are very much familiar with the flower okay flowers are like this very hard to make this symmetrical shape with the pen. So this plant, this flower is going to have, these are the petals and this is the carpel, the carpel or pistil. It is present in the plant and this is the female reproductive organ okay, of the flower. And we're going to study in the
okay we are going to study this one in the next chapter that is reproduction so when a uh, male uh, gamete or pollen grain comes over it let's suppose this is the pollen grain this is the pollen grain that is a male reproductive organ or, or cell okay so when it uh, come over this uh, stigma then it is start germinating a pollen tube okay this is called pollen tube this is pollen tube and this this whole carpel this whole carpel or pistil carpel or pistil is going to have three parts it is going to have three parts one is a stigma a stigma the middle one this tube like structure is called style and this circular structure is called ovary inside this ovary is ovule okay so this this pollen tube give is uh, moves towards this ovule why why because ovules secrete ovules secrete some chemicals specialized chemical and these chemicals actually uh, help the pollen tube to move towards that so it means the chemical secreted by this pollen tube or sorry by this ovary or ovule uh, help the pollen tube to move towards it to grow towards okay so the movement of pollen tube towards the ovary is an example of geotrop example of chemotropism you understood chemotropism so noted down this one here chemotropism the pollen tubes in flowering plants move towards ovule in ovary this is due to special chemical secreted by ovary and by ovule in ovary okay is an example example so i still don't understand what chemotropism uh, chemotropism, uh, chemotropism is supposed to do like actually there are some chemical is being secreted for example you know very well that's that there is an attraction between some chemical then some polar and non polar chemicals are there okay so when the like, pollen uh, tubes like how do they grow how did they grow actually it is a it is a it means that we're going to study more in betterly when we're going to study the reproduction chapter sexual reproduction in flowers so when this stigma comes over this uh, sorry when this pollen grain this pollen grain that that is dispersed over this stigma it is start germinating over here and it this is a pollen tube that is start growing because it is containing the male gametes and here are the female cell that is called egg cell egg cell okay so this male gamete is going to fuse with this so that why it need to grow means this cells are are in inside this and they are going to to uh, to pass or to grow uh, and to react or we can say that it is going to bond with this egg cells okay so that will going to study in the next chapter that is reproduction that you no need to but just you need you need to learn here is the chemotropism we will explain in more detail at it what okay. is fertilization what is double fertilization what is male gamete what is uh, two male gamete sign gamete uh, post fertilization we'll go just going to study this one in the next chapter okay so just understood here there's chemotropism that why pollen tube is coming downward why it is not moving some other way or this is because of the chemical secreted by uh, because the chemical there are some chemical that have some attraction property okay okay so that is called okay. chemotropism Yes. So the movement only happens inside the uh, pollen tube. Yes, yes. The pollen tube start and germinating. Okay, pollen tube start germinating. This is a tube-like structure. It start growing initially when the pollen pollen uh, grain fall all over it. It does not have any any tube-like structure. This this is start growing initially. It is just like this. The pollen grain is like just like this. That this shape. But it start germinating a pollen tube in order to pollen tube because this pollen grain contain male gametes this two male gametes okay so this pollen grain contain two male gametes and these male gametes need to, to need to need to fertilize this egg that is present inside the ovary 
So they are not going to disperse it here and there. So they need to reach its destination. So for, for its destination, they this pollen grain is start generating a pollen tube or growing a pollen tube. And from that pollen tube, let me explain you here. Let's suppose this is an this is a style stigma and this is style and this is an ovary. Ovary, okay. So this is a pollen grain. When it comes over it, this is called pollen grain, and it starts germinating pollen tube. It starts germinating a pollen tube like this way. And inside this pollen tube. They are the two male gametes. They are the two male gametes. Okay, and these male gametes need to fertilize with the egg cell. Okay, that is present inside this. Need to fertilize with this egg cell. Egg cell and this. Okay, so this this is need to be fertilized with this one. So this tube will goes into this one. Okay, why it is moving here? If it is need to come into gravity, then but it is start bending and to start moving inside this ovule, and then this gamete that is going to that is present in in the uh, pollen tube uh, fertilizes with this egg cell. Got it? So this is an example of chemotropism. It will going to study more in detail. It will study the uh, reproduction chapter. Okay? Yes. Now you understood? Yes. Jyotita, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you understood chemotropism? Yes. Noted? Yes, sir. Got it passed. Done, sir. Done, sir. Done, everybody? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. Now, there's another example that is hydrotropism also. And what is hydrotropism? This is hydrotropism. Hydrotropism is when just, this is also, this root is start moving towards the water body. Okay. So, the it's, shoot also moves towards the water body. Hmm? Shoot. Any roots, mainly root is start moving towards the water body, okay? Because root yeah, absorb yeah. water and okay, so they start some moving like, their, yeah. So some There's specific some, plants move towards water, right? The no, no, no. If, most of the plant moves towards the water body. If there is a nearby water water body is here, means if it is a like a pond or a river is flowing nearby, so the the roots of the plant will move towards this water body in order to so get then one more, uh, cactus. Cactus. Is not yeah you can say if there is some water body nearby. I'm just saying that uh, that let's suppose it, it is not such like if I'm having a plant here okay a plant here okay and you think that at, at a distance of ten kilometer from this plant a river is flowing so the root will start moving towards this no a nearby river I mean within a within uh 50 to 70 meters around okay if a water body is moving or if there is a canal or if there is a river is there or if there is a pond so most of the plant are going to have their water roots developed okay it's not, not about the cactus uh, is present yeah it is a hydrotropism cactus like cactus cactus is, is is in the desert so there is no water in nearby desert so if if you are having a plant of cactus and it is nearby we have are having any water body then the roots of the cactus will also move towards that water body so this is an example of hydrotropism just make us the movement of plant uh, roots towards nearby water body is called hydrotropism Uh, how can the roots know uh, where is the water, where is the river? Uh, actually, everything does not work according to the eyes. Okay, there are something that is being required. For example, a, a student, 
or a kid does not know that he is having a deficiency of calcium in his body. So, he start eating uh, soil. Okay. So, why? Why he feel that soil is very good for me? Because his body needs calcium and because of the deficiency of that calcium, he, he feels a very good taste in, in soil. Okay. When the deficiency of calcium is over, then he start hitting this. Okay. You, you cannot eat the particular food for a long time because the mineral or the nutrient that is present in that food that is sufficiently present in the body. Okay. So, sometimes you think that I should eat a special dish that is you are having a deficiency in your body. Okay. So, you think that today I need to drink juice. Today I need to have some, some specialized food. Okay. So, it means that your body is having deficiency of that element that is present in this food, in that food. So, similarly, if the plant is having deficiency of water, so the root start moving towards that area that is going to have water. So, if the water molecules are present here, so it will start moving towards that one. Okay, now you understood? Yes, sir. Done, sir. Done. Okay. Now, let's move towards the nestic moments. What are nestic moments actually? Let me explain you what are nestic moments. I have already taught that nestic moments are those moments in which the stimulus don't have a particular direction. Stimulus don't have a particular direction. For example, for example, if you are sitting in a room, okay, and you are responding towards the temperature. The temperature of the room is 25 degrees Celsius. And if they suppose the temperature of the room, if, if the lights get off or they suddenly there is no light and this is not working properly, okay, this is not working. So the temperature rises from 25 to 35 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius. Then you feel start, you start feeling hot. So you are feeling, you are responsive towards the temperature, but temperature don't have any direction. You cannot say the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius is north direction, is towards the gravity or against the gravity. No. But but you are responding. Similarly, the plant also responds to the stimulus. Similarly, plants also respond to the, the stimulus. Okay. Got it? And then when plant responds to the stimulus, to the, to the duration of lights, you have seen that they, that uh, sometimes uh, you know, you are very much familiar that, uh, that the flowering, flower means the flowers comes out from its buds. Bud, bud is small, which is a packed form of flower. So, in the early morning, you see that uh, during when, when it is early morning, there is not much intensity of light is there. Early morning, the light is very, very, I mean, it is in diffuse form. It is not very high intensity of light that we have in the at 2 p.m. or at 12 a.m. Okay. So, we don't have this uh, amount of intensity of light in the early morning. We have very diffuse, uh, slightly light intensity of light. So, flowering occurs in that diffuse light. Most of the flowers are opens their petals in that diffuse light. So, why plant is responding to the intensity of light? So, plants respond to the intensity of light. But this intensity, intensity of light does not have any direction. It does not have any direction. So, since the nestic moment are those moments in which stimulus does not have particular direction and plant responds to that one. Okay. So if I'm writing here that what is nestic moment? So the, the, the moment that the moment when the stimulus don't have a particular direction, don't have particular direction and, and have a diffuse impact. I Means still there is a diffuse impact. Then the, the irrespective of the direction of the stimulus. I mean there is no direction irrespectively. The plant is responding over it. Okay. So we'll say that this type of moment is called. This type of moment is called. Nastic moment. Okay. So what I'm saying that again. When the stimulus don't have a particular direction. There is no direction is present. The plant. Okay. Don't have a particular direction. And, and have a diffused impact. Then the movement or irrespective of. Means they show the movement occurs irrespective of the direction of the stimulus. Means they, if there is no direction, then the movement plant will be shown. Okay. So note down the definition of nestic moment. Ashid, you understood the definition of nestic moment? Yes.
done the deprivation of elastic moment yes sir okay so let's move further what is photo nasty photo means light photo i have told you that photo means light and nasty means nastic moment to so, photo nasty it means photo it is for photo nastic moment okay nasty why photo nasty means photo nastic moment photo means light and the light when does not have any direction that is called nastic moment so you know that the opening of petals of flowers opening of petals of flowers occurs in diffuse light okay opening and closing like in oxalis and other flowers also so note it down that that opening and closing of petals of petals of flowers in response to diffuse light is an example of photonesty Oxalis, Ashit. Oxalis is uh, is a is a flower. Oxalis flower. Let me show you oxalis flower. It is a type of flower. Thanks. Yeah. This is an auxiliary flower. Auxiliary, you are very much familiar with this auxiliary flower. Okay, so you have seen, I hope. Okay, now moving to the next part is, you might be very much familiar that some plants require a particular temperature for, uh, uh, I can simply say that for, for their proper germination, for the opening of flowers also. Okay, so temperature is also a type of nastic moment because it does not have any particular direction. Okay, you understood? Temperature does not have any particular direction. So, and the plant responds to temperature. You know that apple plants are grown in a, in a region where uh, where there is cold. cold. There is no, not much high, much high temperature. Okay, so why the apple plants are growing there? And why does are not why these plants are not able to grow in, in, in the hotter regions? Because they require some plants require lower temperature for its for similarly, why the dates plants that require that grows in the higher hotter region, why they are not able to grow in, in the uh, in the colder region? Why date plants do not grow in the colder region? So simply because there are some plants that require a specific temperature, there is a bound range. When they are able to germinate, germinate properly, their seeds can germinate at a particular temperature. Or similarly, their flowers can open. When the flowers open, flowers get converted into, uh, into fruits. So flowers results in the formation of fruit, fruits that we're going to study in the reproduction chapter also. So temp change in temperature also influence, wrote it down. Change in temperature also influence the opening and closing of flower uh, in oxalis. Okay. Flower in oxalis. There is an example of thermonesty. This type of moment is called thermonesty or thermonestic moment. Okay. Note it down. Thermonestic moment. What is thermonesty? Change in temperature also influence the opening and closing of flowers in oxalis. It is an example of thermonestic moment. In some plant, response to temperature. Okay.
Done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. There is a special term. Sometimes it is being asked in the question that what is vernalization? Vernalization. So, vernalization is just we can say that the requirement of particular temperature for the plant for proper germination or for flowering means uh, there is a, a temperature bound foundation okay means some plant grows lower temperature required lower temperature so the requirement of lower temperature in plants for the for seed germination and for flowering is called vernalization okay so what is vernalization so note down the definition of vernalization what is vernalization or down this definition certain plants undergo seed germination and flowering at low temperature this requirement of plant for flowering is called vernalization. Then, sir. Then, certain plants undergo seed germination. Okay. This requirement of low temperature. Low temperature. Okay. For the plant, for proper flowering and seed is called. Jasleen, are you writing? Yes. yes sir. Zeba, Madiha, Amar, are you writing? Yes, sir. Where is Ritwan? Then, sir. Okay. So now moving further, dear student. Now, have you seen the touch me not plant? Touch me not plant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Touch me not plant. Okay, that is called uh, Mimosa pudisa. That is its scientific name. Okay, what happened with the with this one is when you touch this plant, actually it's you know you are very much familiar with the Targar pressure. I think so. Targar pressure. What is Targar pressure? And what is turgid fluid? This is that this is the plant cell that is going the to have cell. No, no, the higher you can say that is cell wall. Okay, cell wall, and uh, here in the, in the inside the plant cell is cell membrane. Second layer is cell membrane or plasma membrane, and there is a large vacuole that is generally containing the plant cell have large vacuole. In animal cell, it is absent or either either present in a small size. Okay, so. But plant cell is going to have large vacuoles. And this large vacuole is going to have water that provides force to the cell. Okay. And this make it turgid. Okay. Suppose, suppose this, just imagine there is a balloon. Okay. And that is filled with water. When you touch it, it it's gives its shape. But 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 just when you touch it, just imagine if you touch it with the with the with the needle, what is going to happen? It will it will shrink. Okay, when you touch it with needle, then needle will bust the balloon and the water will comes out. And what would so similarly, similarly, in some plants, if you touch them, they result in in uh, in sudden change in their targar, targar pressure. Sudden change in their targar, targar pressure, which result in ocular movement. For example, have you seen that? That's uh, 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 kids. Kids used to use this one. There is a, some uh, some rolling like structure, some balloon like structure. When you uh, fill the air inside it, then it it goes upside, and then when you remove it, then it comes back and rolling in the form of rolling. Okay, there's a toy of children generally in India. When they go to some exhibition, the kids used to buy this one. Okay, so similarly, uh, this is targar pressure that is providing the turgidity, mean the shape of the cell. Okay, so when you touch them, 
this touch result in breakdown of this turgor pressure. Now it is providing the turgidity. But imagine that if, if you touch it and this, this whole water comes out of the cell. So what is going to happen? Just imagine that this will reduce the turgor pressure. And this turgor pressure result in the closing of the leaves in, in touch me not plants. Okay. So what is uh, nestic uh, seismo? This is called this type of movement is called seismonestic. Like we have photonestic, we have thermonestic. Now we have seismonestic movement. Seismonestic. So what is seismonestic? Touch in some plant causes sudden change in turgor pressure. And turgor pressure resulting in pacular movement. Resulting in pacular movement means sudden movement. Of plant parts such as leaves, get curl. Okay. So, resulting in pacular movement, such as uh, such movement is called such movement is called seismonestic movement. And this is found in touch me not plant. And here it is this, its scientific name. Scientific. This is its scientific name. That is Mosa pudisa. Okay. So, note it down. This is the last uh, topic of this chapter. it down. This monastic moment. When you done, dear student, please let me know. Okay. Done, sir. Yes, sir. Note it down. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. So let it be. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's move dear students further. Now, we're just going to discuss a very important question that is going to come in the examination. It usually comes in the examination. The first one that was why the tendrils, uh, why the uh, uh, shoot of the plant bends when the unilateral direction of light is given to the plant. Now the next one is this a similar type of question comes that you know that auxin and the tendrils. Tendrils. What are tendrils? What are tendrils? Tendrils are the climbing plants. Okay, and uh, these climbing plants moves around the support okay this they are start moving around the support okay how they move around the support why they are getting curled around the support how they are curling over the support okay so let me explain you that just imagine this is a this is a uh, support 
and this part or this portion when it comes in the contact with the uh, means the plant that is climbing over it so one part get touched with this support and another part behind it is not in the support so you need to keep in mind here just ridwan what are you doing are you writing something why are continuously why are you not listening to me that's why i ask every student to please turn on the on his or her camera this is important this will gives you this is this is beneficial for us for both of you that we can keep an eye on you whether you are writing whether you are properly uh, writing your notes whether you are listening to me or you are doing something else okay so this is important this is for your beneficial benefits okay that's not mine so let 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 you listen with one what i'm saying here is that when we have a support okay support let me show you let's suppose i am having a this plant let's suppose i am having this pen okay and this is a plant okay over it so the portion that is in the contact that is in the contact that is this region in with the support let this is a support tendrils around it so the portion that is in the support okay this region that is inside so this region where it is in the support let me turn off this one second okay so if i am saying that this region is in the support for this one okay and this one is not so the region that is away from the support here the oxygen secretion is more and the region that is not in the support the here the oxygen secretion is less okay so what is going to happen here is this is start curling means more growth will be here and less growth will be here okay got it understood ridwan Yes, got it so this is how we can say simply that that the region that is in the contact with the support grows at slower rate and this is not in the contact with the support grows at faster rate and when one thing is growing at faster the backward thing is growing at faster and this one is growing at slower so it will result in curling off and this result in the curling and it result the climbing plants to curl around the or bend around the support okay so this is and in the in the photo unilateral uh, unilateral light light direction case here you see that the shady region is going to have more axin but in the support case the part that is not in the contact that is away from it such okay that is going to have more secretion of oxygen so note it down properly how does question is how does how does oxygen promote the growth of tendrils around the support so the answer is oxygen oxygen in tendrils is secreted more in that region which is not in the contact with the support which is not in the contact with the support this result in uneven growth of tendrils tendrils stem stem resulting in bending around the support okay note it down make the diagram also it is non contact portion and more oxygen here it is more oxygen make this part okay this question is also from ncrt 